pull around. There it is. <laughs> Happy days. We'll just get straight on with it. Right then guys, welcome to another episode of Hooked. My name's John Murray and I'm an angling addict and today I'm down at Lindley Wood Reservoir in the Washburn Valley. What a beautiful place this is. It's a stunning picturesque venue, I'm sure you'll agree. You wouldn't believe it, but last night it was raining oh, for eight hours, I would say, and it was absolutely tipping down when I got here this morning. I sat in the van for 10 minutes and just waited while it eased off, but it's actually getting out quite nice now. Uh, it's quite a muggy, humid day. There's a lot of fish topping, uh, what I would say is probably the 20, 25 metre feeder line. Uh, but today I'm just going to be focusing on the 7 metre whip. So I've balled in 6 balls of ground bait on the whip line. I'm just going to fish over the top of it, keep topping it up. There's just maggots and casters in there. I've just put dead reds and fluoro pinkies in the ground bait and a few casters. We can loose feed over the top. Hopefully the ducks won't be too much of a problem once they get fishing. Whip rig today is a 1.5 gram uh, AS8 float and it's probably a little bit on the heavy side but because i'm fishing out seven meters and i've got quite a long line on uh, just to get some distance it was actually a lot shallower in this peg than i thought it was going to be it's probably only about eight foot so i'm fishing seven meters of whip and then i've probably got you know a good sort of five meters of line beyond that so we're probably fishing about a 12 meter pole line in reality the one and a half gram olivet just allows me to swing that rig out get it in position so the business end of the rig is fairly simple affair uh, basically you've just got a 1.25 gram olive out there, a uh, couple of number 10s locking off at the top, a number 8 below it, and then a number 8 below that, and a number 10 below that, down to a 6 inch hook length, and on there we've got a size 18 Drennan Red Maggot hook. So let's kick it off. Swing that rig out, getting a few dabs on the floor here, may just need to trim the Float down a little bit. No, that's a bite. That's a fish. Now we're just fishing the flick tip today. Feels a nice fish to start. Oh yeah, it's a lovely roach. Lovely roach. What a beautiful roach that is. Absolute peach to start. So I won't bother adjusting just yet. We'll see if we can get the confidence up. Let them settle on that ground bait a bit. Come on ducks. We'll start loose feeding caster over the top if we can never get rid of the ducks. Come on, go away. We've got another fish on. A small perch. I think maybe if the uh, ducks are going to be problematic, the only way we're going to be able to feed this swim is by constantly topping up with small balls of ground bait. came down to this reservoir earlier in the year and unfortunately it was so high it was going over the spillway which is over in the far right corner which I don't know if you can see that but if I just point the whip in that general direction um, and look towards that structure over in the right corner there it, uh, it was up at that level They just need to take a foot off this rig, just so that any swingers come into my chest. Oh, another bite there. Some quick bites. Very quick bites. Look like roach. Yeah, another little dab there. 
that's in. Lovely. Just held that float down, that fish. Oh, good perch this, I think. Nice, another roach. Beautiful fish. So I've contemplated fishing feeder on here today as well. Um, but I just thought I'd kick off on the whip, see how it goes. I haven't bothered pulling the feeder out of the bag. Sometimes you can just complicate things too much and I think this is just gonna be really simple fishing today, which is nice. No matches this weekend, so this is what I've chosen to come and do. Right, I'm gonna try cast her early because uh, the ducks are crazy. You're going after me hook bait. I'm gonna try cast her early because I think with the duck problem, and that is a bite, and that is a fish. I think feeding caster is probably A gonna bring us a better stamp. Roach love casters. And B, we get down faster and out of the way of those ducks. So I will loose feed over the top. Stunning quality roach in here. Hmm. Loose feeding definitely attracts ducks. Ooh. Rapid little half bite there. Ooh, that one's gone. So they are starting to uh, shell these casters. Well, they didn't shell mine there, they shelled another one and I came back with half a caster shell. This is the other thing, with the wind getting up on this reservoir at times, having the slightly heavier rig on, just helps me combat that. I think while the ducks are out of my way, we'll get some feed in. Go away, you're not going to get to it. So the rig's holding lovely and stable despite a little ripple just coming on the uh, water now. A nice little gentle breeze from my left to right, which in this humidity is lovely today. Any lighter rig and I'd struggle to cast it this distance. If you're fishing a shorter tail, it don't matter so much between tip and float, but because I wanted to get that extra distance out there, I could have gone out to eight meters, but that would have given me another sort of three foot of line on the rig which becomes quite a handful to manage, particularly if you get a crosswind on. It just seems to have slowed off a little bit. Yeah, something on that. I think I am going to trim this float down just to, just a touch. Maybe they're just feeling the sensitivity of the tip. Just dabbing away at it. There we go, though. It's nice to read it, though. You can see them just dabbing at it, and then if it goes halfway, you don't have to, it doesn't even have to go all the way down. Struck into that fish. Just halfway pull on the tip, and that's another roach. Whoop. And that's my uh, landing net come off. <laughs> what on earth has happened there? Oh dear. We're in all sorts of trouble. I have to try and rescue that. And repair it. Right, let's see if we can get this fish. I'll just pull him over the keep net. Another beautiful roach.
the insert has fallen out of the end of the uh, landing net. I'm going to have to glue that when I get home, but hopefully we'll cobble through for the day. The trials and tribulations of fishing. Stunning fishing this. Another beautiful roach. Right, I'm just going to make a slight alteration to the setup. I'm just going to shorten this rig off so that what you want is probably about a foot and a half from the bottom end of your rig so that you account for the swing. So we'll take a couple of foot off the top end of the rig. That'll allow me to swing fish in just that little bit easier. The downside is you need to net them further out. And I'm just going to add one more number 10 trim shot onto this. Just pop it above the olivet so it doesn't interfere with the rig. So this rig should be a little bit more efficient now. A little bit easier to cast. Yes, we're fishing a little bit shorter, but not much. Stupid duck. Go away. Keep swimming over the line. They really are a hindrance. There we go. Lovely bite. Look at the action in that whip. Bending through beautifully. Small perch. And that one, straight to chest really is worth just adjusting your whip rig to make your life a little bit easier. Psst. Just managed to strike into a fish there before the duck interfered with my uh, line. And another perch into chest. So, two perch on the bounce there. Sometimes when you start catching perch, it's an indication you need to top up. I'm not sure all that bait's gone yet. Six big balls on it. We've not been fishing that long. But if I can start introducing ground bait without getting interfered with by the ducks too much, then I think topping up with it will be the way to go. The question is, when do you top up? I think there's probably so many fish here, it's not going to do it too much harm. If they'll accept ground bait balls going in over the reds. There we go. That's another, oh, lost that one. Just bumped that fish. Well, it was on and then dropped off. Gone again. It's solid. Absolutely solid. That's another perch. So I'm just going to try and introduce small tangerine sized balls of ground bait. <laughs> Look at this, it's an absolute nightmare with these ducks. 
try and keep these fish on the feed. Lovely. So they will take ground bait over the reds. But I don't know whether feeding little and often balls is going to be doable with the duck problem that I've got. That's another perch though. Switched on to caster now. I'd like to be able to feed more. My feathered friends are preventing that. So I think feeding heavy and not quite so frequently is probably going to be the best way because the less amount of times I have these things coming in the swim the better. Uh, it's all over my float. Come on, get out. Nightmare. <laughs> What do I do about these? Give them some feed down the inside? Maybe. Maybe I will. That's, that is exactly what I'll do. Diving ducks. Right, hopefully that'll just keep the swim going for a little bit longer. Oh no, where's the rain come from? Oh, lovely. Clonking right there. So cast is starting to pick out a few nice fish now. This is a perch. I'm not sure the quality on caster is any better than on maggot. It's certainly easier to feed it when the ducks are about. Now they've moved down the reservoir a little bit. I'm going to introduce a bit more feed. And that was a bite. So these baits are starting to come quite, quite quickly now. Held that float down, that fish. Took it on the way down. It was like another perch. I'm not sure where the roach have gone right now. There's another one on. That's a roach. Whoa, lovely big fish. Swing him in. Bit of a variable day today. <laughs> this wind's really got up right now. Obviously, reservoir's been so open, it rattles down them. Even though it's not particularly strong wind, it's uh, strong enough from the side. It's enough to cause me a few problems casting right now. These fish starting to bite on the drop. Oh, another bumped fish. Let's check the hook sharp. 
Sharp enough. Bony mouths on perch can tend to blunt your hook, so it's worth uh, switching it out if you do bump a few. I may do that if I bump another one now. Felt sharp enough to the touch. Ah, oh, we've missed that one. So either the biting funny or my hook's blunt. So I'm going to swap it. Getting plenty of bites, so I'll go up to a size 16. 0.10 bottom. Main line's 0.13. Put a little top up ball in while the ducks are away. Ooh, that's another fish I've bumped out of. So that's a fresh hook. I'm not sure what's going on right now. Maybe just not grabbing the bait quite right. Right, that's gone. That was a proper bite. They are taking as soon as this bait's getting down. Yeah, a lot of perch down there, so... Oh, that one's off. The perch having bony mouths, they are a bit of a nightmare for bumping them at times. Starting to see a few fish swirling when I'm uh, feeding up in the water. What's this? Another perch. Just wondering if the roach have come off bottom a little bit. a fairly instant bite that and another perch Wind's getting a bit tricky. You won't want to be fishing a long pole in this. Even hanging on to this whip's getting tough. There we go. That float was just pulling off to the side. So it's the perch shore right now. Oh, yeah. And another one straight on. So these fish are actually swirling up in the water now. They are uh, going mad for these casters. A bit of a problem for me because I don't really know. I can't really fish a light rig over the top out there. I do think the roach have come up. The perch are sitting down below. So the only way we're going to get those roach back down is by putting another barrage of ground bait in. So we may need to stop loose feeding over the top or feed heavier. A 
That's another fish on. And another perch. So I definitely think that the perch has sat down on the bottom. The roach have come up top. I'm going to try and drive these roach down by introducing plenty of hemp seed into this next batch of ground bait. Still got the small nuggets, but we're going to go in heavy on the feed. Try and sit these fish down. I brought a couple of kilo ground bait, but I maybe should have brought more. Probably on about five kilo. Right, I'm going to introduce four large top-up balls. Just try and pull the fish back down a bit. Let's see, fishing shallow with the whip isn't really an option. Not at this distance. Let's get them in. Try and avoid those ducks. just stop loose feeding now and that's the problem we'll keep the ducks out of my way and uh, once they calm down over that what's gone in and hopefully it'll just pull these roach back down May take a little while. We'll see what happens. Mr. Duck gets away from my float. Psst. Honestly, if it isn't boats, it's ducks. <laughs> Diving straight on top of my float. It's just. So irritating. Clearly there's bits of bait just floating back up from where we've balled in and they're trying to get to that. But hopefully most of it's set on the deck. It's heavy, it's caster, it's hemp. Heavy ground bait. Oh, we can't seem to get through the perch now. But it's good spot nonetheless. Oh, another one off. Just losing a few of these fish. Change my hook pattern. Dropping a lot of fish to perch because they're so bony mouthed. Still unable to locate these roach. I've had one roach since I introduced the ground bait again. Just keep popping some in there as long as the ducks stay out of my way, which I think they've disappeared for the time being. We're good to feed, but those roach have definitely come up in the water. And that causes a problem. That fish took on the drop there. Catch 
kiting around. Oh, there's another perch. Oh, pumped another fish. Honestly, don't think you can throw enough ground bait at these fish. It's just getting a little frustrating right now. We've bumped fish and dropped fish. Right, I'm just going to try and combat bumping these fish by threading a maggot, a dead maggot, up the hook. So pretty much like you'd thread a caster, I've threaded that maggot up the hook. It's a dead end, so it won't fold over the point. It might just improve our chances of hooking up with some of these fish. There we go, we're into one. It's come off again. So, that trick didn't work. So I think, because we're getting so many bites, I'm going to get an even bigger hook on. Wonderful. Right, so I've now got a size 14 hook on, and it's raining. It's stopped again, I think. The cut will be back off again in a second. Well, this 14 now will just allow us to get a better hook purchase on some of these perch. Certainly not hook shite. <laughs> I do not believe it. I'm not entirely sure why we can't hook these. That's a brand new sharp size 14 red maggot hook. I've tried different patterns, everything going. Not 100% certain they're grabbing this right. Well that has gone and another fish bumped off so even the change onto the 14 is not helping me out now. They must have the boniest mouths ever these perch. Try double red, see if we can catch an aggressive fish. <sighs> Hooked another, bumped another. out I don't know why I'm bumping so many fish unless we go the opposite direction and go down to a small hook see if that'll stick in these bony mouths right so I'm going to change hook size again and I'm actually going to go the other way now I'll switch back down to size 18 See if we can make that stick. That's a bite and we've hooked up. So maybe the uh, bigger hook size was making a difference. Whether the fish stays on is another matter. Yeah, that's a perch. Another one. Finally, we've hooked a roach. Them's what we want. Beautiful. On the caster.
It's another nice roach. Still losing a few fish. The 18's hook is helping. It's the perch you tend to lose. Float set up in the water. A roach. So they definitely come up in the water of the roach, but I think we've driven them down a bit with the ground bit. We're starting to get a few more. Nice fish that. Just be careful with my landing net head because it's uh, decidedly dodgy. Them to stamp a roach we want. making sure that ground bait's getting down trying to keep these fish down on the deck boat stood up Right guys, this weather's all over the place. Uh, one minute it's raining, next minute it's blowing an absolute hooli. Uh, then the sun comes out. I don't know whether to keep my top on, take it off, but um, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, but started getting into a few fish. All I'm doing now is just feeding basically tangerine sized balls of ground bait. Uh, the ducks aren't bothering me too much now the waves have got up. The float. The AS8 1.5 gram is performing superbly out there. I mean, it's just holding so stable. I'm getting some lovely bites, predominantly fishing caster now. Every now and again, I'll switch to red maggot, but caster seems to be the bait now. They've, they've really switched onto it. Um, still getting a lot of perch, dropping and bumping as many fish as I'm landing. Um, but there's not a great deal I can do about that. It's just the perch with the bony mouths getting some lovely roach in between if I could just really focus the roach on the line that would be the ideal scenario but um, you can't always pick and choose what's going to take your bait so we have managed to drive a few of those roach down by keeping feeding the ground bait and just stopping loose feeding basically but yeah I think next time five kilo ground bait with me don't have to be anything too fancy, just bulk it out with brown crumb. Bit of PV1 binder in there, that just helps get it down. Keep these fish on the deck. Imagine they're an absolute nightmare to catch up in the water. If you fish the long pole, then I think you'd have a good chance of uh, taking them out shallow. If you can keep them down on the deck, they're so much easier to catch. Right then guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget, give it a thumbs up. Or if you're so inclined and you're a loser, give it a thumbs down. Entirely up to you. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hit the notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time I upload one. There we go. Fish on. Oh, another one off. It's amazing how many you drop. The rain's coming across again. Don't seem to be bothering the fish though. So if I'd gone any lighter on the float this morning, I'd have definitely been struggling by now. Ordinarily in flat calm conditions, you'd get away with about 0.8 gram. Um, but just for casting weight, you do need that extra weight down the line. If you're fishing a pole, you'd probably get away with 0.6 gram on here on in you know really nice conditions. But I wouldn't want to be trying to hold a pole out there in this now. It's battering the whip. Yeah, fish on. 
Let's see if we can keep hold of this one. Tear around all over the place, these perch. Absolute beauty is. This goes to show that the rig's performing right because you wouldn't catch those roach in this kind of weather if that bait weren't presented right. Beautiful roach. Another lovely roach on. See him in this beautiful water. Smashing fish. So I think the key's been just keeping that ground bait going in. Um, seems to bring the roach in. It certainly makes them get their heads down. It was looking like a bit of a nightmare when we were loose feeding this morning and they were all swirling on the top. But by just keeping hard nuggets of ground bait going in, oh, and we've it into something here. So I say, just, just uh, throwing hard nuggets of ground bait, tangerine sizes. Um, it's done a nice job. That absolutely tore off. I don't know if this is a perch. Yeah, it is a perch. I hit into that and it took off. Absolutely took off. Not the biggest of fish, but... They fight well for the size. And it looks like somebody else is hooking his hooks in him as well, so I'm gonna to have to get that out for him. And that's it, extracted for him. So clearly he did have some power because he smashed somebody else up. That's another fish on. Lovely roach again. Don't know if it's just coincidence, but whenever you throw a ball of ground bait in, you seem to catch a roach. There's 
those red kites flying up above. Magnificent. Just catching the wind. Another fish. Oh, the wind is strong. Another beautiful roach. Ah, oh, he's off. Bingo. It's certainly not scared of a bit of ground bit on the reds. And that's a roach. Oh, great big daddy o Fantastic fish. Fish took more or less on the drop. Barely even settled that float. What a gorgeous roach. Peas in a pod. <laughs> oh, yeah, that wind is uh, getting absolutely wild now. use two hands because the wind catches the whip and it's starting to take its toll on my wrist now. I'm getting tired. What another beautiful roach. Caster's definitely been the best hook bait today. Right guys, I've run out of ground bait now, so I'm pretty much going to call it a day. I'm just going to have another half an hour fishing over what's out there, and then we'll get the fish out and see what we've had. So once I run out of ground bait, the perch started coming back in, and that was it really. My wrist's absolutely shattered from casting out into the wind all day, but I think we've had a nice little bag anyway. Can't complain at that. Some lovely fishing there. Not a bad little bag of silvers, some lovely roach and perch. Didn't find any bream, but you can't have everything. Let's get them back, let them go. Back to the watery home. So that was whip fishing at Lindley Wood Reservoir. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Until the next one, thanks for watching and tight lines.